And that is the coffee industry, right? Everybody loves everybody. We are getting a little bit more cocky about it. It basically means step by step. This needs to be an industry a little bit more open to everyone. Why porcelain? Why is that important? I do not see a future where coffee is as good, as diverse and as cheap as it is now. Welcome to Nordic Coffee Fest. Their goal is to be the most sustainable coffee festival in the world. For example, quick win, but only reusable cups for tasting all the coffees. And check out these reusable and quite stylish, might I add, uh, plates and bowls from Light My Fire. And this is really cool, a spoon with a fork all in one. They're even giving away all spent coffee pucks to local garden centers around Gothenburg and also tracking exactly how much waste goes out, keeping it all to a minimum. But did I fly all the way to Sweden just to drink coffee? Well, yes, but also I was invited to do a quick talk about a topic that I feel doesn't get discussed that much in the specialty coffee scene. That is about cultural coffee traditions. So how can we preserve and honor the traditions that got us here in the modern day and innovate with those traditions as we move forward? So I decided, why don't I take my camera, go ask a few people down on the floor to see what their perspective is and if they have anything to share about the history of coffee and how it can influence where we're going as an industry. Let's go check it out. What I have here is a cupping game four different coffees and you have to match them with four different uh, origins. Uh, it's always fun to put yourself to the test, but I didn't do very well, so <laughs> let's move on. You feel confident? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> After priming my palate, I dove into the real competition of the weekend. And these Mocha Masters right here is literally a bunch of the same coffee provided by De Terra, a world-class farm in Brazil, and then roasted up by 12 different roasters in the Nordics. This is Gabriel right here talking about their farm and the coffee they provided, which was a new varietal called Guarani. But let's rewind a bit. It was actually during the previous day of the show that I went around interviewing people, hence the different get up. <laughs> Look who I found, another coffee camera person. Alex is actually gonna be giving a talk all about coffee influencers, what else? That's mainly at home baristas, the, the boom of the home barista world. That's why we're here. Yeah. Some of you may recognize Alex Dante Smith. If not, give him a follow. His link is down in the description. I got to do a bit of a warm up as he interviewed me really quick for his TikTok and then went to bug some people on the floor. To learn more about your Indonesian uh, right. coffee that has a orangutan aspect to it. Right, right. Yeah, so we are uh, part of an amazing project in Sumatra. Uh, it's a uh, orangutan coffee project and it's all about uh, supporting farmers so they can uh, you know sell and uh, grow better coffee and uh, and in the way we are also saving the forest and making sure that the orangutans are keeping their homes. I'm curious if you can speak to any cultural coffee traditions mm -hmm. either in Icelandic culture or maybe Indonesian culture mm -hmm. and how those traditions ha are making their way more into the modern coffee approach as we continue to innovate. Coffee that we have now, it's a, it's a honey processed coffee. They are known for uh, semi-washed and the wet hulled uh, coffees, but they're doing a little bit different um, this time so they can have it a little bit more cleaner. But this method comes from other places because Sumatra is not known for that. What's one thing that people should know about Icelandic coffee? I think like uh, we are still into filter coffees. Uh, that's our heritage. It's it's a little bit Nordic, but uh, in Iceland we are just starting to uh, drink espresso. You know, we are getting a little bit more cocky about it and starting to you know have like a single origin espressos, like natural processed uh, espressos, like Ethiopians, and so that's also uh, quite interesting. So I can't <laughs> I can't wait to come visit you again. Oh Look, my God! Looking yes, forward to it. Yeah, you have to come. Awesome. Oh, and this was really cool. Chocolate pour overs from Belgium-based Ander Cacao. Worth a tasty try. Here we are at Paso Paso. How can we be inspired by cultural traditions of the past to move forward as an industry? So this is a vandola. 
It's traditional uh, of Costa Rica. It was uh, invented by a Costa Rican like 20 years ago. So, it, but it is inspired like in pre-Columbian art, and it is made of clay. The special thing is that first of all, the clay will keep the it warm, as yeah. you can it's probably still very notice. Hot on the exactly, outside, yeah. and it has here a little hole. It helps with the oxygenation. And also this angle here, where the filter is. Paso Paso uh, is located in Hanover, Germany. And the owners are from different countries. So two from Costa Rica, one from Nicaragua, one from El Salvador, and one from Ethiopia. This traditional vandola reminded me of a dripper I saw just the week before at the Madrid Coffee Fest. It was a great festival. I got to catch up with old friends, drink some great coffee, and it seems we started a trend because even James was there giving a talk on a very similar topic about the past and future of specialty coffee. But let's go catch up with Ainoa from Trite Coffee in Vitoria, Spain. The shape and design, it reminded me of, you know, something a little bit more traditional. How do you feel we can learn from the past and be inspired by other cultural traditions to move forward in a coffee context. We thought that um, uh, looking to other countries, and it was uh, when we cross up with the Costa Rican uh, well device, which is a uh, pretty similar but a different uh, material. Yeah, I've seen something like yeah. that before from Costa Rica. We, uh, we are seeing uh, people saying that the Ethiopian culture also have something similar. So it's like wow. A lot of uh, producing countries have uh, these kind of methods. So we designed this device, new device, which is 100% porcelain. It's very clean and... Yeah, it's, tell me a little bit more about why porcelain, why is that important? Uh, it's not porous and it's really clean and it's uh, a really good material and also it is very it's resistant. Strong. Yeah. And especially the result of uh, filtering coffee in this kind of devices makes the beverage even more balanced, especially body, it's getting a bit heavier, but also it's combining really well acidity and uh, sweetness, which is making the experience even higher. Amazing, thank you so much. This thank is really cool. You. Yeah, I love the coffee, very tasty. And while we're here, we have to pop on over to the Halo booth. Fitting with the theme of sustainability, this espresso machine avoids the boiler and uses pure induction heating for the brew and milk steaming. Well, Diana, thank you for joining me here on the on the floor. I'm, I'm going around, as I told you, asking people how we can be inspired by different cultures, traditional cultures of coffee around the world for moving forward as an industry. So for me, it's tricky because I am originally from Colombia, but living in Italy. So it's like two really important uh, cultures in terms of coffee and completely different perspectives and approaches to the culture of coffee. So first, as Colombian, I, I drink my whole life Tinto, which is this really watery uh, coffee <laughs> and that, is, that it's made out of like a with a filter. So it's completely different or, or the opposite uh, that what you drink in Italy. But the interesting thing is that anyways, I am in Italy and Italy has also a strong coffee culture. Uh, it's always espresso, uh, opposite to the one I used to drink in Colombia that was watery. So it's a lot of contrast, but I really believe that in this moment, the industry is going to the origin, like how things just start. Because I mean, we are all a, little, a little bit tired of this super funky and fancy stuff. And maybe we just want like, coffee. The equilibrium, you know, because exactly. every industry goes through these different waves, right? And we might go to one extreme and then we might come back to equilibrium, go to the other extreme. I think even some of the way that we drink pour overs today, they were all inspired by the, the traditional brewers. Totally. Yeah, and I also think like this needs to be an industry a little bit more open to everyone. And using these kind of super traditional methods like the coladera, you can like maybe attract attention of people that has been using the coladera and they just need to do it in the right way and anyways it's to a make proper. It a better, you know, yes. just a few small changes few small and changes. you can make it much better. Totally. Awesome. Thank you so much. And no, sadly, James did not have time for an interview, but I told him I'd catch him next time. All right, we're back in Sweden, I'm already pretty caffeinated, but one last shot can't hurt, right? Thank you. Enjoy. Mm. Wow, this is incredible. This is uh, Cedra Natural from a producer in Colombia called Nestor Lasso, becoming quite, quite popular. And it was roasted by standout roasters from Stockholm and then brewed up here on the Slayer by Alex. So really, really nice. Reminds me of kind of like a, almost like a fruity IPA, kind of a very juicy, mm, 
New England IPA if you want to make a beer comparison, but we don't have to do that. We can just drink it as coffee. And remember when we helped judge the coffee roasting competition? Turns out Standout Coffee won the People's Choice Award and Good Life Coffee from Finland won the overall best roaster. I finally had a chance to sit down with Alex to wrap up our time at the show and record a quick podcast for the Nomad Barista. What are two big takeaways from Nordic Coffee Fest? Nordic Coffee Roasters uh, really know their stuff. Like, ah, good coffee, respect for the producers. Like, everyone I've spoken to has mentioned their producer and trips to trips to origin and, and, and you know, trips to South America or, or to Africa to see their producers and how they they want to promote them. And um, So that's one thing. The sense of community between them all as well, you know. It's such a nice thing. And that is the coffee industry, right? Everybody loves everybody. All right, so that was Nordic Coffee Fest. We're wrapping up. People are having some beers, getting some food. They just announced the roaster champions of the weekend. And uh, go check out the podcast episodes on The Nomad Barista, Spotify, Apple, wherever you get your podcasts. I'll leave the link down in the description. And hope you enjoyed this video talking about the Nordic coffee scene and some sustainable topics cultural coffee traditions, and I hope to see you out there.